evening. My name is Josh Saunders. I'm here today to briefly talk to you a little bit about um, shootings in schools here in America. As a teacher at a high school, I tend to have a lot of meetings with admin and the whole staff and, and even students to make everyone aware of school shootings. So I wanted to discuss how we need to be more aware in different ways than all of the staff and parents and everybody freaking out as far as everything that we think we need to do around the campus that could save a life other than things that maybe we could do inside the school and inside the classrooms and inside the admin offices that could probably go much further into some of these kids than trying to make brand new locks or deadbolts or more fences and, and etc. Um, what I'm discussing here is, is awareness. Um, almost as a plea to have staff and, and admin and people that's in these school systems to open up their hearts and think a little more about programs that can help students in any grade, elementary, middle, high school, and even the college programs that can help these kids get over that hump of disbelief in their self, of um, not being able to cope with other people, depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal thoughts, bad thoughts as far as voices in their heads that could tell them to do things at schools. All those things are possibilities that could lead kids to want to do the things that have happened in America. We recently had a staff meeting here um, about gun awareness and, and shooter awareness at schools. And once the principal stopped talking, most teachers put in their two cents about how they thought we could make this place a lot safer. Uh, we had one man that described a lock that he could make for really cheap, which typically the county is not going to go for that. Um, we had teachers fussing about the lack of fencing around the acreage here. We had teachers fussing about the lack of security. We had teachers fussing about the lack of gates not closing after the school day. We had teachers wanting to put up metal detectors. Um, so with common sense and rationality, you know, myself, I'm a realist, and I know that money plays a big part in our school systems. And I think about somebody mentioning metal detectors. That sounds great. But how many metal detectors would you put on a high school campus? Every entrance. Because most high school campuses are built as an open facility uh, with multiple buildings with different classes. And you can't afford to put a metal detector at every single entrance because there's not just one entrance for that school. And there's not just one entrance for that each building. There's multiple entrances for these facilities, and we we can't do that. It doesn't justify anything. And what I want you to realize is I don't think it truly stops anything. I don't think that in the past with the shootings that we've had, were these kids taken care of before they reached that point of impact where they felt the need to come to that school and take someone else's life, and including their own. Um, with the fencing, once again, more money for the county, more money for the schools. Taxes go up. I'm sure people would love to pay more taxes to make their kids safer. But then again, is a fence really going to stop a kid from doing what some of these kids have done? There was once an incident where there was a kid that was already placed at the school, had somebody else pull a fire alarm, and he was in sniper position at the top of the building waiting for kids to come out on a fire drill. There's no fence. There's no metal detector that's going to stop that type of scenario. 
So we've got to come up with more awareness plans. We've got to come up with more programs to help kids. Um, I want to lay out some statistics for you that kind of back up what I'm saying that all these great plans about locks, fences, security, metal detectors, all that stuff, or even, even putting guns in schools for each teacher, which I think is nonsense. Don't put the thing in the school that you're trying to take away from your uh, citizens in America. If that's the problem, then we do not need to put the problem in the school and sit it there. So with that being said about all these things that you know most teachers and parents are going to say these schools need, I would like to throw out statistics that would venture to say that maybe we need more programs, maybe we need more care, maybe the teachers need to get more involved, and maybe it would defer some of these things. Because if you're going to get into teaching, and yes, it's not the most paid career or the best financial career, but you're taking a job that you need to love and enjoy because you are basically, you are another kid's parent. You basically see that kid almost, if not more, than their real parents. So you need to take in consideration that you got to love and care for those kids just as their parents would and more. So that being said, talking about school shooting, the stats that I recently looked up date back to 2013. So I drove out stats from 2013 up to now, and the CDC has counted over 300 or more incidents of students using guns in school. And these were related to homicides and suicides. And they date back to 2013. Over 300, 300 incidents in schools from elementary to high school. 93% of those kids were male. 93% of those kids were male. And here's a statistic that will get you a little bit of what I was talking about when it came to depression and anxiety. 26% of those shooters ended up committing suicide during the incident. 69% of those shooters perpetrated the homicide before. Very well planned. So if they're already planning it out, 69% already planning it out, they know what's going on. They know how to enter the school. They know where not to go. They know what to look for and not what to look for. They have it ready. That's 69%. It's a plan. 78%, 78%, this goes back to the 26%. Suicide, but 78% have had a history of suicide or suicidal thoughts. 78% have had a history of committing suicide or have had the thoughts. That's pretty deep. That tells you where most of these kids mentally are. 71% have been bullied or attacked in the past that led them up to the events. 95% were current students of the school. 95%. 95% were current students at the schools. That tells you a lot, too. That goes back to the 69% that perpetrated the homicide. 61%. 61% of the kids are coming in with handguns. And 49% have decided to use rifles and shotguns. So it's pretty close to what they're using. Most of them have came in with one to two weapons max in, in the history since 2013, based up to now. So with that being said, I think it goes to show that a lot of our kids are having a lot of issues. A lot of our kids have had a history of suicidal thoughts. All that comes from a disorder of anxiety, a disorder of depression, some type of mental disorder. And anxiety and depression are not something to overlook. And, and we have to pay attention to those things in school, especially now. So as teachers, I'm begging you and trying to persuade you to look deeper into your kids. Don't beg the county to put up a fence. Don't beg the county to put up 100 metal detectors in your school. 
Step up and take the time to find your troubled kids. Put as much time into those kids as you do those A students. Even though they might not end up passing your class, you may have changed somebody's life. You may have changed somebody's life that were in that 95% that were current students that decided to go on a gun rampage at their current school. Don't let one of your kids be that kid. Have a plan. Be aware of every surrounding. You need eyes in the back. You need eyes to the right. You need eyes to the left and in front of you. You need to hear everything. If some kid tells you something strange, you need to take it seriously. Don't blow it off. And I will I'll leave this, this um, debate or this conversation with you guys. We just recently had an incident here last week. We just had an incident here. We had in the bathroom stall, in pen, something in uh, Spanish, a little bit of English, but it ended up stating it was a statement that was threatening somebody's life, and the word, and want to shoot him, was involved. We didn't take, we did not take it lightly. Admin, local police went straight to work. They found the kid that wrote it. Broke it down through detailed videos and all that. Come to find out, there were two other kids involved that had been mentioning about hurting other people, that had mentioned the word shoot, that had mentioned the word school, that had mentioned the word guns. Other kids started hearing about it and went straight to admin. So kids are taking it seriously now, too, and I think us adults do, too. Now, come to find out, once they started digging deeper, they found out who the other kids involved were. And it wasn't just playing around. They ended up finding his uh, some detailed map in his MacBook that belongs to the school of which buildings they were going to shoot up first. And that's at the school I work at. And I'm very proud to say that I am proud of our admin for taking things seriously. Even a remark. A janitor seen that, that a custodian seen that cleaning and took it seriously enough to go straight to admin. And those are the things that have to happen. Those are your plan of actions. Those are your awareness actions. Those are how we prevent. That's your prevention. We can go spend money and we can do things like fences and metal detectors here and there. But right here and here is your prevention and your awareness and knowing the stats. And the stats come from the problem with the kids that have problems. The stats come from the problems that get pushed to the side by us teachers. We have to take our jobs more seriously. We have to be a parent for their parents. They can't control their kids while they're here, so we need to take that advantage to take our school, our class, and our kids here a little more serious. We need to be the prevention. And I think realistically, um, we can do everything in the world, but at the end of the day, any student, any teacher, any parent, or any citizen of this society out here can walk up into any facility, not just schools, with any plan of action, with a gun, and do damage. And there's not a whole lot of prevention you can do about it. But we do have to be aware. We do have to have a plan. We do have to have a lot. But it's the things we do before that buildup that really matters, in my opinion. And I would like to think that after today and reading the stats and where some of these current problems come from, that you teachers and hopefully some of you parents can take into consideration that we need to do a better job, not just here, but nationally. We need to do a better job. So with that being said, I hope when we leave here today that we can move forward with a new attitude take care of those kids that really don't care too much about school, don't have a lot of friends, they might get bullied, they might get attacked. Treat them the same as that A student. Find out what's wrong with them. Get to know them. Take that time. You may change your life. You also may save a life. Thank you.